Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Magic Monday. Today we're looking at a deck called Reap What You Sow with Tasha on Holy Archmage. So she is a 4 mana cost blue black planeswalker that until your next turn for a plus 1, uh, whenever a creature attacks you or Tasha, put a minus 1-1 one, one counter on that creature. For minus 2, target opponent puts a creature card of their choice from their graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature gains ward 2. And for minus six, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal three creature cards. Put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. That player puts the rest of their cards into their graveyard. I have messed around with a bunch of different Tasha decks since this card came out. And this one might be my favorite to play. It is basically just a mill deck. Uh, so the idea is to get up to that minus six and burn it. Get as much stuff into the graveyard as possible because it's a mill deck. Average mana cost is 3.5, heavier blue than black, as you would expect with a mill deck. We only have 13 creatures, 8 instants, 8 sorceries, 16 artifacts, 11 enchantments, 3 planeswalkers, and 40 lands. So, looking into this a little bit, key cards, of course, Ruin Crab, that has the landfall ability, very useful. Uh, the stone is in here, it's not great, but it does help exile creatures if they die from the opponent's side. Um, it's mostly just there as a deterrent and as a target for like disenchants or naturalize or whatever. Uh, but but the, real, the real crux of this is the milling. So we've got cards like Drown Secrets, whenever you cast a blue spell, target player mills two cards. Maddening Cacophony, which when kicked, each opponent uh, mills half of their library rounded up. This guy here, target player mills four cards with an adventure, or his power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. If I don't have a uh, an exile with, like, stone out, he can get pretty big. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's, it's just a handy, versatile card. We got some removal with Heartless Act. We got our normal assortment of mana rocks. This guy is stupid. If an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many instead. Yeah, he, of course he had to be in here. Some counterspell stuff here with uh, Didn't Say Please and Thought Collapse. Exactly the same card, but with different art. A little bit of draw power with Divination. Frank Sanity. Enchant player. At the beginning of each end step, Enchanted player mills X cards, where X is the number of cards put into their graveyard from anywhere this turn. Basically double everything you do. With this guy, it gets really dumb really fast. If you can manage to get both of those out, yeah. Mana War, just to be annoying, kick a card back. Midnight Clock, just to recycle our deck and have another Mana Rock. Psychic Corrosion, whenever you draw a card, each opponent mills two cards. Teferi's Tutelage, same thing, but you draw a card and discard a card when it enters the battlefield. <clears throat> we got some removal, sorry, I gotta keep clearing my throat here. Cry of the Carnarium to exile creature cards that get killed that turn. It's a good board wipe if you're doing like a token against a token deck, whatever, minus 2-2 two, two until end of turn. Um, this can destroy a creature and then exile target opponent's graveyard. Not great for that creature I showed a minute ago, but great for making sure that they don't have a midnight clock that can actually do anything. Go blank, same thing. Target player discards two cards, then exile that graveyard. Ashiok, same thing. A target player builds four cards, then exile their graveyard. So really, it's a lot of, like, get it into the graveyard and then get it gone. Thief of Sanity, um, just because it's a pain to deal with. It's just a, it's a good card for a deck like this. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of that player's library, exile one of them face down, and put the rest into their graveyard. So if it hits a player, it mills three, and I get to cast one of those three with any mana type. Bunch of mana rocks. And also, the Planetaire, because I like this card. Um, Realm Breaker is nice because two tap, target opponent mills three cards, put a land from their graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under your control. And in a worst case scenario, ten tap, sacrifice Realm Breaker, search your library for any number of Praetor cards and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. We do have a couple of Praetors in here. Mana Rock, sort of body and mind, because this is the one that when it hits, it mills 10 cards. And Mana Rock. Draw Power. Jace for a little bit of mill plus draw power. 
Startled Awake is fun. Target a player mills 13 cards, and then you can put it in back into play as a 1-1 Skulk creature that is returned to your hand when it deals combat damage. So you could just mill, like, every third turn 13 cards. Um, yeah, plus I like the art. It's super creepy, and uh, I think it works well. Uh, if you would draw a card other than the first one you draw at each turn, draw two instead. Really great if you've got Teferi's Tutelage out as well. Tezzeret's Gambit, draw two cards, then proliferate. Great for getting our Tasha up to six, so we can do that ultimate. Then we got some removal, Eat to Extinction, Isildur's Fateful Strike, um, Leyland of the Void, which uh, if, a, if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Fantastic in a mill deck because, man, nobody makes, nothing makes somebody quit faster than a zero turn Leyland of the Void. Followed by a Ruined Crab. They just, they quit. Uh, one Ring to Rule Them All, which uh, does a little bit of milling, then destroys all non-legendary creatures. And then each opponent loses one life for each creature card in that player's graveyard. So not great with the Exile stuff, but in certain circumstances can be really nice. Plus the board wipe on uh, the second Saga uh, step is nice. Here's one of our Praetors, Shaildred. Whenever you draw a card, gain two life. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. Simple. More exile, removal, hostage taker, more removal, more mana rocks, one ring, which I'm not going to go over. I think most people watching this video know what the one ring does at this point. Patient rebuilding, I think, is an underrated card. It's a little expensive to get out, but at the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent mills three cards, then you draw a card for each land card put into their graveyard this way. So... In an ideal scenario, you have, mm, where is he? This guy out, so they're milling six cards, and then you're drawing a bunch of cards because every time there's a land, you draw a card. So Psychic Corrosion hits again, and then you're milling again. It's It feeds into itself really nicely. The other Shieldred, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker, and you can exile it to return it to the battlefield as a saga that will just... It's, it's nasty. Uh, cut your losses. Target player mills half their library rounded down with a casualty 2. River's Rebuke because it's a blue deck and this card's annoying and so is blue deck. Liliana for some board wipes, some draw power, some token creation. It's just a great card. Xanathar so we can play some of our opponent's deck to help them mill a little bit faster. Two gins. So we got this gin that copies an artifact, instant, or sorcery when I cast it the first time a turn and counters it when an opponent casts it the first time in a turn. We've got the other gin, which is the flash. At your beginning of your end step, draw seven cards, and each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. So this has just stupid high draw power, especially with some of those cards where it's like whenever you draw, mill two. And if you've... <laughs> In a long game, if you happen to get uh, Teferi's Ageless Insight out, you would draw 14 cards at the end of your end step. I mean, you could end up milling yourself, potentially, but, you know, you're also probably going to make them quit, because drawing 14 cards every turn is enough to make most people quit. And then the other Shieldred, so we got three Shieldreds. This is the Whispering one at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Just some board control. And then we got a nice collection of lands. Um, just some different art swamps here, just to mix it up. Thriving Isle, which I would love, like, a portrait print of that artwork, because that's just gorgeous. And again, with the islands, just some different, different art to mix it up. I actually really like this one, and while I'm looking at it, I'm actually going to take some of those out and put some of these in, because I like these more. Um, Castle Ventress, you know, to help us scry. And some dual color lands, Watery Grave, Shipwreck Marsh. This is nice because we can use the sacrifice to mill four cards and return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So if we manage to get one of our 13 creatures out, but then they kill it right away, we could sacrifice this and bring it back at the low cost of milling four cards. Whatever. But if, uh, like, Shieldred ends up in our graveyard, we could sacrifice his land, bring Shieldred back, and we're in business. 
So, all of that being said, let's take a look at some games. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you again real soon. And please remember to take care of yourselves and each other. Really, it's a Monday morning. Do it. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Thanks for watching.